Hey, this is Hollis from HollisEaster.com and ScottishFlute.com. Today I'm going to be doing a teardown on this Rolls MS-111 mic switch as preparation for showing you how I added a phantom-powered LED that indicates when the mute switch is on and off. Um, I'll do that in a future video, but for today I wanted to show you how this thing is built. This is a really nice switch, and I think these are well made. Um, the quality of materials in them is excellent. Um, and I'm not sure you could build a better one for less money. So I do, I think these are good and they're relatively easy to modify. So let's get started. I'm going to move this one out of the way. So I ordered this from Amazon. They're about 45 bucks. I'll put a link in the, uh, in the description if you want to get yourself one. It's a nice, it's a nice sturdy case. Like I've used these for years. I've used this one for years uh, on stage and you can see, you know, some of the, the decals are starting to wear off, but otherwise this thing looks pretty close to immaculate after years of playing. It's got a nice sturdy switch and when you'll see inside it's, it's well, uh, well placed. So it has good strain relief. Um, so I step, I put these on the floor and I step on them all the time summer winter and you know it still looks pretty good um, <clears throat> the basic parameters are that you have this switch that is uh, I forget how it comes from the factory but something that's nice about these you might be able to see in here there's a little rocker switch in this in this opening that's accessible from the outside with something like a screwdriver or something um, and that basically sets whether you want the up or the down position to be muted. Um, so people have different preferences on that one. The circuit that I designed for adding the light to this um, doesn't use that switch currently. So you kind of have to build it for yourself the way you want it, whether up is muted or down is muted, but I decided I didn't care about that. Anyway, this is a little take easier to take apart if the switch is down. Um, something I like about this also, so it's got these little rubber feet. It's got some holes in the bottom of this, so if water does get in there, it'll drain out. Um, the XLRs are retained with screws, um, and this whole case fits together really nicely, so it just feels very beefy and like it's not going anywhere. Anyway, let's get into this. The screws um, take a, a Phillips number one. Uh, if you don't have that, you can use a larger Phillips, but uh, a slightly smaller one gets in there with less risk of stripping them out. Um, so you've got these two that hold it together, and then um, these are often a little bit tight at first because it's, it's really right in there. All right. Here we go. So this one is actually really, really tightly put together. Um, it's got this really nice steel housing that indexes down into this quite well. Um, so this is a pretty simple circuit. There's a version of this posted on the Shure website and a bunch of other ones for how it's how it does the muting. Um, I'm just gonna keep bringing this apart here and. Uh, We'll get it all the way out of the case. It's a steel box, which is nice, and this pin that I just, or this screw that I just took out, uh, grounds the circuit board onto the case, which is an important thing. Okay, so here we are. Again, it's a really simple circuit. You've got a pair of XLRs, um, so you're just essentially swapping this into a mic cable. You've got a switch. You've got a selector switch that basically just inverts the operation of this guy um, so that this either works when it's up or when it's down. And then you've got a resistor and a capacitor and the ability to short out the, uh, the resistor so the signal just bypasses it. And that's what we've got going on in here. It's a clean board. Uh, there's plenty of room on it. Something that's nice about the way this is built is that when it's installed, Again, it's it's well made so that it's secured to the bottom of the uh, to the bottom of the case by the screw that goes here, which is also grounding. It's secured to the case through the XLRs here, so there's not a lot of leverage. And what you can also probably see is that 
this switch that they've chosen, the, the housing of the switch is designed so that the plastic actually bears on the bottom of this, uh, uh, the bottom of this case. So even if you stand on this thing, none of the force of that is going into your circuit board. It's all going directly down through the body of the switch and out of the case, uh, which is a really good thing for durability. Um, again, these are nice touches that I, I think you'd be hard pressed to manufacture this thing to these tolerances at a lower price point. So I decided to use these partly because that's what I had, but also because of these advantages, I just wanted to see if there was a way to build this status LED in. In my next video, I'm going to show you how to do that. It's a 470 microfarad capacitor. Um, doesn't need to be highly rated for voltage because this is not going to see a ton of volts um, but going between the two signal lines. The ones that you add for, uh, for the mute switch need to be rated more highly because they're going to potentially see 48 volts. Um, and that's basically it, you know, quality build. It's a small board, um, but it's, it's well made, it's well manufactured, the soldering joints look clean. And in my next video, I'll show you how we can turn this into that. Thanks for watching. If you like this, please hit subscribe, give it a thumbs up, and check out either hollisester.com, scottishflute.com, or find me on Facebook. Thanks very much.